Welcome everyone to the May 2018 Stats Amore webinar. We are here uh, with Elaine Eisenbeis, who has been a statistical consultant for many years, has uh, analyzed hundreds upon hundreds of data sets, and um, knows about some of these tricky situations that we all encounter once we get into real data. So I am going to turn it right over to Elaine um, to talk with us today about multiple testing and multiplicity. Thank you, Karen. Hello, everybody. This is great. I'm happy to be here. Um, yes, today we're going to talk about multiplicity. And um, on, on the screen there, you can see uh, my uh, picture for cherry picking. And um, handling the, the multiplicity problem is going to help us to keep from cherry picking, which means, you know, lots of times you'll run lots and lots and lots of tests. And, um, and it'll make it so that you have a higher chance of just getting lucky. Um, or you can, you know, be trying to cherry pick and, and looking for that uh, wonderful p-value, right, that everybody wants that p-value less than 0.05. So um, multiplicity is going to help us to control for this so that we have more of a chance of actually seeing tr the true, true findings that are really, truly um, meaningful, significant, and not um, just getting lucky. Okay, because the statistics is all about probability. Um, one of my favorite things to say is uh, in statistics, 2 plus 2 isn't 4 like it is in mathematics. Um, it's like 2 plus 2 is, oh, it's around 4, maybe a little bit of error, right? So we're always dealing with probabilities and chance because we're guessing. Okay, so um, we don't want to cherry pick is uh, the reason for that picture. And then also, um, I had another one. I couldn't help myself, so I had to throw in this one, too. Um, don't go on a fishing expedition, and that's uh, where you'll run into your problems with multiplicity. Um, maybe you'll run 20, 30 tests. Um, or there are some other um, types of fields, like genetics, where you're running tens of thousands of uh, tests. To, to check on a, a, a genome or some kind of a you know, pattern. And um, you'll, you'll find significance all over the place. I mean, out of 10,000, you'll probably find 500 things, 500 significant findings just by chance, okay, um, if you're using that 95% confidence level um, that we all like to use because we like that p-value of less than 0.05. So uh, the, these people have a lot of poles in the water bound to catch a fish, you know. Um, but in statistics, you don't want to just get lucky. You want to try to uh, search for, guess, guess at the truth. Um, so I always like to tell you um, a little bit about me and how I think. Uh, Karen did mention that I, I am an applied statistician, so um, I, I work with actual data and on actual studies all the time. Um, so I have an applied approach. I'm not so big on theory. And I, of course, I do use math. Math is a tool of statistics. However, you're not going to find that in, in most of my presentations that I'm using a lot of uh, math and uh, calculus and such. I try to keep it uh, more of a holistic, rules of thumb, things I've seen in practice. Um, I, I try not to be too, too big on the proofs of concepts mathematically. So um, usually that's good news for people. Um, <laughs> if, you're, if you want to know all the nuts and bolts and the math behind it, then, uh, then I might disappoint you today. But otherwise, it's good news. So here's our outline. Um, we're going to do a quick review of the concepts and terms on um, hypothesis testing. And um, we're also going to talk a little bit about what is multiplicity. And we're going to talk about differences between the family-wise error rate and the false discovery rate. A lot of people uh, mix them up, and it's easy to do. Um, and there are times when you might not want to adjust. You, you might not have to adjust, even. Um, and then there's different approaches. And, and um, there's, what, five of them here? And they're pretty simple ones. Um, you know, they, they can get very convoluted and difficult. And, of course, this, this is a webinar, um, and it's just an overview. So I'm not going to tell you everything in the world about multiplicity today. I don't even think I know everything in the world about it. But I'll tell you what I know and what I think, and we'll go from there. Um, okay. So the first thing would be um, Karen asked me to put this slide in, and, and, and it's a good idea. Um, 
a lot of times you'll run some tests, uh, an ANOVA uh, regression, MANOVA, and you'll have an omnibus test. And typically with an ANOVA, uh, well, let me talk about maybe regression might be easier. You'll have one omnibus test. It's actually an ANOVA test. Um, you'll get it in your output. I use SPSS quite a lot. So um, in my SPSS output, it'll have an overall model significance. Then if you have a p-value less than 0.05 on that model test, you can now go down and look into your individual coefficients and see which ones are significant for the model. Um, the model test basically, when you're using ANOVA or regression or MANOVA or anything like that, what the model test does is it's just saying with all the predictors, for instance, in a regression, with all the predictors into the model, are we getting uh, a better bead on that outcome? Are we learning more about that outcome than we would if we had just taken the mean score on that outcome and not looked at any of the predictors? Okay, so whenever you have something like that with an omnibus test, you don't really need to worry too much about the multiplicity adjustments that I'm going to show you today because that's already taken into account. We're looking to see if the model we're building is better than a null model, which is just the average, right, the average score on whatever the dependent variable is. Um, and so then if, if we do that omnibus test and it shows that their significance, then that's saying, hey, something's going on here, you know, something that you put into the model model is, is making, uh, giving more information to, to your outcome, to your dependent variable. Um, so there's two ways to approach a situation, um, which is the omnibus with the post hoc. So with an ANOVA, you'll go in and look at your Tukey test, right? Um, with your regression, you'll have your big model significance or your overall model significance, the omnibus. Then you get to go look at your coefficient. Looking for practical, relevant answers to all of your statistical questions? Join our Statistically Speaking membership program for the full presentation and access to new live presentations like this one every month, as well as weekly Q&A sessions with our statistical support team. Visit theanalysisfactor.com for details. Happy analyzing!